It is finally time to get organized in this shop. You've probably seen this mess in the background of some of my videos. It's embarrassing. And you know, I just felt like the timing was right because plywood is probably as expensive as it will ever be, ever. So I can just run out and buy every sheet they had because that seemed like the smart thing to do. And I'm gonna make a wall full of shop cabinets probably over two or three videos and get organized and clean up this disgusting mess. The first thing I need to do is break down this plywood. We'll cut all the pieces that we need for the cabinet before we go over and clean that mess up and install the cabinets. Now you can build two upper cabinets, which is five feet total or 30 inches a piece with three pieces of four by eight plywood. And it's actually two and a half. You'll have half a sheet left over after you're done. I've also got a free plan for this project. There's a link down below to go download that. And in the plan, I lay out all the pieces on the plywood so you can see how you would cut them out. If you've got a table saw, a good way to do this is to cut it down with a circular saw a little bit wider than what you need it, and then take it to the table saw, and that way all of the pieces will be exactly the same width after you run them through the table saw. After I get all the pieces to the width that I need on the table saw, then I take them over to the miter saw, and I'm being really careful to measure correctly here so that they're all the same length. So I've got the top and the bottom and both sides cut to the dimension we need them. The next thing I wanna do is arrange these so that the good faces are showing. So the way I'm doing this, I'm building two of these upper cabinets and they're gonna be screwed together. So the one on the right that goes up against the wall or close to the wall, it's not gonna have either one of the sides on the outside showing. The other one is only gonna have one outside face showing. So I need to find a piece that has a good face on both sides. For all of the rest of the pieces, the top and bottom and all of the rest of the sides on both cabinets, the outside face is not showing, so we don't really care what that looks like. We wanna make sure the best face, the best side of each piece is facing the inside. I put these pocket screws on the outside of the top and the bottom to hide them, but more importantly, we did that to make them more secure. If we would have put these on the inside, then they would be angled towards the edge here and they wouldn't be grabbing as much material. So you always wanna to try to put them on the outside angled in. I'm gonna take the clamp loose on this top piece so I can put a bead of glue on each edge and then we'll put it back into place with the clamp. Check one last time to make sure that this is square and then I'll drive the screws in. When I cut this back piece, I did the same thing that I did on the sides and the top and kept it just a little bit bigger than what the plan called for. Now the ideal way to do this would be to reference measure, and that would be to wait till you've got the top and the sides put together and then measure for what the back piece needs to be. But even then, cut it a little bit bigger than your measurements and that way you can sneak up on it. Before we get too excited about the box being done, I forgot to drill the shelf pin holes. That's not the end of the world, admittedly, because we can still hold this up there and drill all the holes. It's really the inside that's kind of a pain. I think this, 
I think this thing comes off. Oh, what are they trying to prove there? And then we could put it up there and drill. It's just frustrating and irritating that I forgot. So for the next shop cabinet, I will drill those holes before I put that together. It's just me screwing up so you don't have to. Now it's time to cut out and install the doors. And it's important to remember that you want your opening to be not only nice and square at the joints, but it needs to be the same distance all the way across. Now we know our sides are the correct length because we cut them to that length, but you also wanna make sure that in the middle, you've got the same length as on the sides because sometimes your pieces will sag. And in fact, on the second cabinet that I built, the top piece is bowed a little bit for some reason. So overnight, I turned this clamp around and it has the ability to push out and I left it stretched out like that just to loosen the joints at the top and bottom a little bit and to get it the same length in the middle as it is on the sides. If I hadn't put that clamp on it last night, then the door would have a nice reveal until that top bowed and curved underneath it and the door would be higher and then it would kind of come back later and that would drive me nuts, and I would want to rip this off the wall every time I saw it for the rest of time. When you're measuring and cutting for the doors, this is a time where you absolutely want a reference measure. And that just means build the cabinet like it is now and then come up and measure for the doors as opposed to just going off the plan and cutting the doors out to those dimensions and hoping that they fit. One more nice touch that I'm gonna add to these since I'm gonna be looking at the front of these doors most of the time is to give them a nice consistent grain pattern. So they're gonna be side by side. So I'm gonna take one from here and one from here and that way the grain flows nicely across the two boards and it looks like it does on this sheet of plywood. I'm using these cup style hinges for my doors, but you could use the surface mount hinges and then you wouldn't have to drill the hole for this cup part. I'm gonna use this jig and it's really easy, but all it is is an inch and three eighths Forstner bit and it's got a collar on it so that it drills the right depth. Another reason I like using these hinges is because they're fully adjustable. So I just install them to the recommended distances and then I can adjust as needed. Well, now it's time to clean out this corner and make room for the shop cabinets. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know what could be living behind or underneath this shelf. I don't know if there's a family of badgers that I'm gonna to have to relocate. I probably haven't seen most of this stuff for six or seven years. I'm gonna throw a lot of it out, I would imagine. And most of all, I just really don't wanna do it. But I've got to because I've gotta get this video done and I need somewhere to put the cabinets, so watch me do that. <coughs> oh, rubber feet. Oh yeah, I actually bought this off a Facebook ad. It cleans the carpets in your car. Yeah, never used it. I think this is an attachment for it. You can tell that that hasn't been sitting long. What else do we have here? Oh, spark plugs that don't fit any car that I own. Ooh, these spring clamps could come in handy. <coughs> Seashells from the beach because we need to bring those home. This is really good spray paint. Montana, if you ever need to paint plastic. <coughs> really good stuff. What I think I'll do is put this over on the other table so it'll be in the way when I go to build the bottoms. So that will be a good decision to make. That's my daughter's little baseball glove. That 
That's sweet. I don't think we ever played catch. More of a basketball family. Engine oil for the weed eater that I no longer own. I just have random drawer slides. I mean, there's probably, I see, I mean, that's, there's three sets right there. And then I know yeah, there's some up here. I, 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 oh, look, joint tape for drywall. Probably won't be using that. It's now infested with dust. Did it rust? I don't know. If you want to be really organized, get you one of these paint trays and just stick all of your paint stuff on top of it. And then slide it randomly onto a shelf. That's fantastic. Ooh, it's a baby one. Oh, it's still got some juice. It's a scooter motor that does not work. So I don't know why, why, why would I keep it if it doesn't work? I mean, I get it. There's probably some good parts on it that I'll never use. I just don't understand why I keep stuff like that. Oh, a trailer hitch. Will I ever need that? I better keep it just in case. Some more paint storage. Go ahead and keep the bag. I mean, it's good organization. Just keep, go ahead and keep the bag and the receipt. Get dust all over the foam brushes because that won't get into your finish. Oh, <coughs> that stinks for what, some weird reason. De-icer that is no lie, probably 17 years old. Not that old. Is that date on it or what? Probably will burn a hole in the windshield at this point. Jiffy pots. I, I don't plant things, so I'm not sure where that, <coughs> where that came from. So you wanna hear my super secret trick for tubes of silicone and caulk? And they get all dried up inside there and you can't use them anymore. Instead of trying to dig it out and open it up, just stick it on your shelf and then go to the store and buy a new one. So that's efficient. Purple power, heavy duty. I said duty. I'm not sure what this is. I mean, I know what it is. Just don't know why it is. That is why it is in my garage. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Why do people keep li license plates? I, I don't know. This is serving its purpose. My wife gave up asking me to hang that on the wall to match the other one, because she, she knows me. See, the paint storage is just, what is that? What is that? It looks like I need it. I can't tell you what for. I don't know why this is out here. Grizzly. <laughs> Should be wearing a mask. All these bags. Tell me down in the comments. What do you guys do with these bags? It's a nice little touch that they add these when you buy a drill or something. What, do you, what are they good for? What do you guys do with these? Let me know down in the comments. This corner's looking pretty good. So now I can put the shop cabinets on the wall. I'm gonna use this ledger. I'm gonna screw this into the studs right at 54 inches to the top. Then I can put the shop cabinets on top of that while I screw them into the studs. I'll start by marking all the studs along this wall and then measure from this wall to each mark. And that will tell me where I need to screw through the back of each cabinet to get to the studs.
I really do like the way these cabinets turned out, but I'm gonna add edge banding to this one edge just because it's so visible and it really does not look good. I'm calling this phase one in the shop cabinet build. In the next video, I'll build the lower cabinet. Don't forget the free plan for this cabinet. Link is down below. Go watch one of these videos next. I'll see you over there.